Good morning and welcome to Monday's edition of Open Air. I'm Jane Irving. And I'm Eamon Holmes. A very good morning to you. Let's take a look now at what's coming up this morning here on Open Air. In a moment, it's your chance to quiz the game show girls from then and now and ask, do they feel prize fools flaunting the charms in the small screen? Then at ten past nine, we find out what's had you reaching for your phones on the open line. Five minutes later, at a quarter past nine, we talk to Malcolm Morse, the husband of leukaemia victim Denise and the subject of last night's BBC One documentary, A Matter of Life and Death. Then, just before 9.20, Sun TV critic Gary Bushell faces the viewer's verdict. So, call us now with your questions and comments. And don't forget that this is the number to ring. OK, as we said there, quiz shows are on the menu on the open air this morning. And here to share their prize secrets are three game show girls that scored successes in programmes like these. We'll rest a little longer while Anne kindly describes the target for us. Well, this target shows youngsters from that fine organisation, Task Force, voluntarily decorating an old lady's sitting room, which thrilled her no end, as she only wanted a front gate painted. The target is on the step ladder, and as usual, the highest score wins. Good luck. And so, Isla, could we now meet our first contestants who are here to play our special Easter generation game? From the West Midlands, uncle and niece Peter Tadwell and Janet Brown. Good luck, Sally. I'm going to put those letters into this person. You've got 15 seconds to solve it and win the car. You can guess as many times as you want. Go for it, Sally. Good old Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. Is that all you do, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> Very much. Excuse no. me, she's Scottish. No. <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard you speak one time. At the end. It was a big responsibility, though, for you taking that over because you were taking over a role, the most famous hostess role in the world, actually, created by Vanna White. That's a big responsibility on you, though. Well, I, I was proud to be able to do it, I must admit. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, though. <laughs> do, you not, do you not feel you're expected to live up to the success of this American hostess who does Wheel of Fortune in America and known worldwide? People kept quoting back to Vanna White, but I think the British audiences are very, very, very different from the States. Um, we don't have the same kind of um, mass hysteria. We don't have the same kind of prizes, unfortunately. But um, we do our own version, and, and I'd like to think I'm the, 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 ver the British version of Vanna White. Right. Riley <laughs> Sinclair. Apparently yes, we picked the only I mean, clip where you had your hair up. The only clip where I had my <laughs> hair up. We did it for one Easter. How you managed to find that was quite remarkable. And between what years did you do the Generation Game? I did four series from 1978 to 1981. Crack it was how long? That's eight or nine years ago. Yeah. But it's quite remarkable, the power of a, a show like that. I mean, it basically is what you'd call a monster, I suppose. A show that has 18 million viewers and sometimes up to 20 odd million when ITV went on strike. <laughs> and do you, you find, although, although, <clears throat> you know, in a pub quiz or something, I can understand people sort of remembering mm -hmm. who, who the Generation uh, Game hostess in was a, or one of them were. In a pub quiz. In a pub quiz or something. If you were asked a question like that, <gasps> but do you oh, yeah. find that people actually st stop you in the street and still remember you for Yes, it? very much so, which is quite remarkable. It's the power of being. In a way. I still can't quite get my name right. We still get Isa and, uh, you know, all kinds of connotations of Isla. That was always a difficult one, despite the fact it was on every night. But it is an awkward kind of name anyway. But in a way, it makes it memorable, even if it is the wrong pronunciation. <laughs> so, in retrospect, I mean, looking back mm. with experience, um, would you have entered into the whole thing the, the way you did? I mean, was it good for your career or not to do the Generation Game? That's something I shall probably never know. But had I been... Um, shall we say, had more direction at the time, more definite direction where I wanted to go musically and what I wanted to do perhaps with theatre, uh, documentaries, which I'm more interested in doing in general and having, you know, overall have given me more personal satisfaction, shall we say, then I probably wouldn't have been so quite so ready to leap into the, mm. in the net. Well, you're talking about documentaries and things there. Do you find that you're actually now pigeonholed perhaps through doing uh, a program like the Generation Game and acting as a hostess. And um, think. Well, strangely enough, do, doing the Generation Game gave me the opportunity to do a, the perhaps the series I'm proudest of, 